All right, in this video, you're going to learn how to back up your photos and videos from your phone. So if your phone starts getting full, you want to back those up. A lot of times they'll back up to a cloud if you're on Google services or iCloud for your iPhone. Um, but you also might want to back those up on a disk so you have them somewhere just in case anything happens. You'll at least be able to fall back on that disk. And a lot of these discs, these DVDs and Blu-rays, um, are supposed to last from 50 to 200 years. So it, it actually burns into the metal of that disk. Um, so we're going to take a look at some of those. So one of the first things that you'll need to buy is a disc. Uh, the most compatible and most used is the DVD minus R. They do have an RW, but some people say that the RW don't last as long. And the W is for rewritable. Um, so this is a one-time write, and it's 4.7 or 4.7 gigabytes. They do have dual layer, which is twice that. Um, and you can also, if you have a Blu-ray player, you can get a Blu-ray disc, which is 25 gigs which would be a lot easier because uh, a lot of times the phone nowadays will hold a lot more than 4.7 gigs so you'll be burning a couple DVDs but not not that big of a not that big of a problem so this is a really good one the um, verbatim ultra live gold archive grade so these are like the top of the line uh, once you burn these it's best to keep them in a case and keep them in a, a dark kind of a cool place so you don't want them in a hot place like a storage shed or something where they're gonna warp um, so let's go ahead and take a look at how you do this. Uh, what, the first thing you want to do is plug in your phone via the USB cable into your computer. And once you have the phone plugged in, a lot of times on the phone itself, uh, not all of them, but uh, some of them on the phone itself, something will pop up and say, hey, do you want to transfer files? Uh, and it'll give you a few different options. Um, it'll look something like this. And always do transfer files. And once you click on that, um, that'll tell the phone, hey, it's okay, to, this computer's okay, I can transfer files to it. Uh, sometimes, if it's the first time you plug in, it'll take a while for Windows to go and update and find the drivers for that phone to work with. Um, but once that once that's done, uh, you can right-click on your uh, Start button if you have Windows 10. If you have Windows 7, then you'll just left-click on there and then go to the computer. But on Windows 10, you can right-click on the Start button and click on File Explorer. That's going to bring up your File Explorer. And then what you'll want to look for is uh, this PC. Is it Now, when you click on this PC, you're going to see your DVD-ROM, uh, 4.37 gigs. You're going to see any uh, hard drives that you have attached to the system. And then you'll see the phone that you attached to the system. Now, what you want to do is uh, double-click on your phone. It's going to show you the internal charge storage. You can see how much is free and how much you have used. Double click on that. Now, all these folders are going to come up. The standard almost on any phone is called DCIM. If you click on that, you're going to see a camera. You may see open camera. Normally, if it says camera, that's where your pictures are going to be. But if we look in here, we're going to see the pictures aren't here. Um, in this particular case, I use another camera app that I downloaded called Open Camera. And if we go in there, you can actually see there's the MP4s, which are the movies. And you can see the sizes are a lot bigger on the movies. And then you'll see the JPEGs, um, which are the pictures, and the sizes are smaller. So I know, okay, this is um, the correct one for me. For most people, it'll just be the camera. You'll go in there and see all your pictures. Now, at that point, uh, what you'll want to do is you can go back up, use the up button to go back up or go back. Um, to get back to where your folder is and then what you're going to do is you're going to grab that camera folder to your desktop in this particular case I'm going to grab the open camera and I'm going to drag it to my desktop just like that now it's going to copy all the contents of the uh, open folder to your desktop the videos and pictures and once it's done then we're going to go in actually uh, and then burn those to the disk all right it's just about done uh, copying and once it's done, we're to go in here and take a look at how to burn them. So we've got a few, about 30 seconds remaining. We'll go ahead and open the folder and start looking at it. Now, when you open the folder, um, it, it's easiest to click on View and then look at Details. And the reason for that is because let's say you have um, a thousand pictures and videos. Well, uh, that could be over 4.7 gigs. So if it is and you select them all and just try to send them over, they're going to get an error message that you don't have enough space. Um, so the easiest way to do it is you can sort by size and then click on the top uh, top uh, file. And then at that point, you can uh, hold down the shift key on the keyboard and then uh, select a few of them. 
Now, the reason you're going to do this is because you want to grab a, f a little less than 4.7, like maybe 4.5 gigs worth of files. And um, when you do that, you can actually lasso them too, like this. And then if you look down here on the bottom, or you can right click on the highlighted files and do properties, either way. Um, it's easier just to look at the bottom and it'll say you have two, 22 items selected at 1.49 gigabytes. So you know, hey, that'll definitely fit on a 4.7 gig. So then at that point, you could select more of the files. And at this point, we selected 2.24 gig. Um, so we know that they'll definitely fit on the CD. Now, if if you have, like I said, if you have a thousand more, you'd have to kind of just keep selecting um, until you can get to about 4.5 and once you have once you have those 4.5 selected then at that point you can right click on it and then you can click uh, send to and then to your DVD drive you can also at the top once you have them highlighted you can click burn to disk so either way we'll uh, put them on there now this is going to how do you want to put your disk so you can put put a title on it and then um, I would suggest I wouldn't do it like a flash drive because you want this to be as permanent as possible. And this is mastered; it basically closes the disk and it um, so it's set up for long-term storage. So click on Write with the CD player. Click Next or like a CD player. Now it's going to, it's going to show you all your files and also a little um, item will pop up in the window here. And then you're going to see all your files are sitting there ready to be written. They actually haven't been written yet. You actually actually go up here. Now one of the things that's interesting is Windows 7, um, they just have a button right here. But on here for some reason, uh, you have to click on the uh, Manage tab and then click on Finish Burning. So I think Windows 7 is a little easier. You just come in here and there's a button that says burn to CD. But on here you have to click manage on Windows 10 and then click the uh, finish burning. Once you click that, it's going to come up with another prompt and ask you, uh, the title will be there again, and then it's going to ask you the response recording speed now this is important um, you want to put it on the slowest possible the higher number means it'll burn the CD faster but it's not going to burn as good uh, because the laser is going to burn actually burn into the uh, disk and you want the laser to set there as long as possible for each each piece of information um, so it'll burn it better and uh, it will last longer uh, so once you get that just click next and it'll start burning the CD. It's that simple. Once it's done, you can take it out and, like I said, store it in a cool place, uh, a cool dark place. And I uh, wouldn't, I wouldn't put it in any uh, heat. But they supposedly should last up to 50 to 200 years um, if stored properly. So I don't think of any other way that you could keep the. This is the safest way that I think that you could keep um, your photos and videos for the long-term storage. I can't think of any other way. Um, I know some people like to keep them in the cloud, which I think is a good idea too. If you lose your phone or something, at least you can just download them real quick. Um, but and the cloud does have backup, but you never know. I mean, what could happen? So it's always good to have them in two places. Uh, definitely wouldn't hurt to have them uh, archived on CD. It do, they're not that expensive, and it doesn't take that long. Um, once you get all these on archived, uh, you can go in and just delete them all from your camera and then you, you got them on disk and you're ready to start shooting more pictures. Alright, I hope you found this video informative and helpful. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. I'll be more than glad to answer them for you. Alright, take care and have a good day.